in the middle, calling for the football. Schneider, will he give it to Rebold? He will. Rebold oh. runs it. Touched up the boots. Oh, oh my goodness. That? Wonderful chase by his jaw. He came up behind him like a librarian. He never heard it. That was impressive, Dennis. It was really a magical moment in the biggest game of them all and the bloke who performed the deed, he sure joins us. I uh, noticed you were smiling when you had another look, uh, like the rest of it, it was a great moment. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's, um, it's always good to sort of look back at that. Um, I didn't think I'd be remembered for a smother in my footy career, but <laughs> I think I will now, so it's good to say. I just got a text from Uncle Tony. I agree with him. You're still number two. Uh, Tony Shaw for mine is still number one. But tell me, what's it like uh, growing up? Your dad captain of Collingwood, your uncle captain of Collingwood. What was it like growing up ashore? Um, oh, I suppose you always have that um, that stigma of being ashore and and you're only there for sort of your, your last name and people give you a bit of crap about that last name. But um, I worked hard on my footy sort of my younger years and, and going through the under-18 competition and and sort of uh, repaid that faith when I got drafted and, and hopefully I've done done a bit for the club and, and made my own sort of name. Why do you say stigma? I would have thought mm. it's a famous name in footy. Yeah, it's, it's a famous name in footy but growing up you sort of get a little bit of crap from yep. opposition opposition players and even as a young kid being Ray's son and yep. um, Uncle Tone being, being there as well, you sort of they sort of say, oh, you're not as good as your father or yep. you have that sort of stigma about, about the name but um, yeah, as I said, I just hope I've paved my own way and um, created my own name sort of thing. 146 games actually leaves you exactly where your father ended his career, 146. Yeah, it's uh, good timing going up to Sydney this week against Reese <laughs> and um, going past Raymond and um, all the family are going to be there. So it's, uh, it's going to be a great occasion on, on, su on Saturday night and um, hopefully we can get another win against Sydney. Will you talk to him before the game? Will you seek him out? Do you have any formalities that you observe? I speak to him before every game and mm -hmm. speak to him after every game. So. Do you ask him about his beard? <laughs> um, <laughs> he should. <laughs> I stayed with him a couple of weeks ago when we went up to play GWS and um, I mentioned it to him, but there's no real reason behind it. I think uh, the Razor's been, put, been retired for the year and he's just going to grow it out. Before I, think... I let uh, Ruzi have a crack at you, what do you think of his comments? Uh, clearly he's concerned about the way that your defence is almost dysfunctional, I think, to uh, coin a phrase. Um, I think we've been pretty inconsistent throughout the year um, defensively. Uh, maybe that's personnel, but um, we came into this year and I suppose you, at the end of every year you, you assess where you're at and you have to change things, um, no matter you finish first or you finish 16th, because you don't want to stand still, you want to you move mm -hmm. forward. And um, We thought we needed to work on offence a little bit more, um, but still have that defensive side of our game. So. It's hard to find a, a good balance of that and um, to round 18, I think we are now, 19, we're still trying to find that balance because we've had some really good patches and some pretty average patches and we're going to have to sort of smooth that out you, if we're going to make an impact. You, you, that one play you seem to have dropped, is that Wellingham, not dropped, but I mean that tagging type play, was that a conscious thing or was it just the way the, the season has evolved? Yeah, I think um, Sherrod's probably played a bit more forward this yeah. year um, and you've seen guys like... Beamsy and Sidey and Blairy step up and you don't want to take away their natural flair and, and they've done so well in that midfield winning the ball and getting it forward you don't want to sort of say to them go and tag someone or, or take them out of that position so um, we've sort of let that evolve as well and um, some teams have taggers we naturally haven't had one yeah. sort of a hard hard tagger for a few years now and, and it's worked for us but you definitely have to have to look at things throughout the year and, and maybe that's something we might change. I mean, to be fair to you, I think one area of your game where it has improved is defensively. I, I thought you were outstanding on the weekend. I mean, some of the spoils and, and some of the, t the times that you actually were able to close the gap, and we see a few here as we go through it. I mean, you were one out a lot of the time, which is a bit unusual, and this is it's a bit unusual to see Collingwood defenders one out over the last two or three years, but there were so many times during the game I watched and you saved um, some of these defensive here. It was interesting because Mick did cop a lot of criticism for leaving you in the back pocket and full back, but it seems to, in the long term, made you a better player. Would that be, be right? Yeah, definitely. Um, Mick sort of said to me a couple of times, just deal with it sort of thing. Um, I'm going to have to deal with it throughout my career. So um, I think that made me a better player. And um, yeah, as you saw, 
sort of played like a defender on the yeah. weekend. I, I love to have the ball in my hand. I love to run with the ball and, and impact the game. But, but sometimes you, you have to play like a defender and, and that's just stop your man, whoever it is. Well, I think, I think there's no doubt it actually changes the other coach's mindset because as an opposition coach, you, you used to love to take you back to the goal square because there was in the back of your mind you thought, I'm not sure he's a great defender. But now it does. I think you, you probably, you arguably the best one-on-one -on -one Collingwood defender. So I think it's a credit to you the way you've, you've improved that defensive side of the game. You've also played a bit more offensively this year as well. Wing, sort of, probably not forward, like Reese loves going forward and kicking goals, but a bit, bit more on the wing? Yeah, I've, I've sort of had a dabble everywhere. Um, same sort of thing if, if, say, Bucks thinks I'm getting tied down playing sort of full back and getting dragged back, he, he'll throw me up on the wing. And sometimes he started me up on the wing. And, and against GWS, I, I managed to slide forward a couple of times there, which is it's always good to get a bit more freedom. But um, my best spot's obviously down back, and, and I'll back myself one-on-one -on -one against, against anyone. I think the main person I'm scared of is one-on-one -on -one against Trav Clake, so um, <laughs> in intra clubs. But, yeah, I have confidence that I can, mm. at the very least, bring the ball to ground. He's a fascinating interview with Mark Robinson in the Herald Sun about three weeks ago about attention deficit disorder. You talked so openly about that. It was really blunt and honest and, and, and informative to us. How does it manifest itself in terms of your football? Do you have to do certain things to avoid it? occurring match day or, or during a match even? Um, not match day, I think uh, I get caught up in the moment a fair bit on match day and, and you probably see with me and Maxie and, um, and that having some pretty heated words, it's, it's sort of spur of the moment and um, you try and control it but it's, it's pretty hard to when you're out there. So uh, is that medication to control it? No, I don't. I used to take medication when I was in school um, but as soon as I was drafted because um, it affects your sort of appetite and I was pretty skinny around 18 mm -hmm. years old. Um, I went off the medication and haven't had it since. Is that the traffic cop routine or is that just your natural personality that you sort of are so demonstrative on the field? Yeah, it's, I think it's my natural sort of personality. I think you have uh, 40 guys at the club that will tell you that's what I'm like day in, day out. Um, and especially my mum and dad, they'll, they'll back that story up. But um, sometimes, I, or most of the time, I love being the cl class clown. but. When I'm out in the field, I I feel it's easier for me if I'm sort of directing and always talking to players. It's it's easier for me to sort of focus and, and get everyone in the right spots and, and makes life a lot easier. One last thing from that interview from me. You said the quote was, our best is the best. And when other clubs say that, they're just making it up to sort of almost like a con. But you believe it. You believe that your best is significantly better than the field. I think, yeah. I think our best is the best. Um, I didn't mean that about every team. Some teams say it and you... You, just, you look at them and you think they're just saying that for the fun of it. But um, some teams, they are really good, but I believe on our day that our best is the best. Your best includes Travis Cloak dominating, mm. though, and he's a long way away from that. Uh, has it been an issue, this whole debate about his future? Um, I think it has, yeah. Everyone says it hasn't affected the club or him, but it obviously has had an effect on him. Um, if it wasn't there, then mm. so it's a big weight off his shoulders. And... As you said, we need him playing his best for us to, to have a real tilt at, at this year. This time last year, you are almost unbackable favourites for the flag. Where do you think you're at at the present time? Because you seem to be a long way from your best. Yeah. Oh, well, the coach said Benny Hill music should have mm, been put under the mm. uh, game on the weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a tough one. Um, we're, we're, I think we've, we've won a lot of games off our talent. Mm. Um, our best game was obviously the Adelaide game, and we didn't have Swanee. And... Trav didn't play that well, um, and we had two guys down in the in the last quarter, and that was a really significant game for us. And if we can get back to that sort of standard, then I think we can beat anyone. But at the moment, we've we've definitely got a lot of improvement to do if we're going to match it with with Hawthorne and even Sydney this week. Just got another text. This one from John Longmire. They're playing Reece Shaw forward uh, on the weekend. He's picking you up. We're looking forward to a great game between you uh, and your brother and, of course, Collingwood and the Sydney Swans. Thanks for coming in. It's been great having a chat to you. You've been very open and honest, and we've really admired the way you've gone about it. Uh, good luck for the rest of the year. No worries. Thanks, Thanks